Hey guys, this is Jan Gustafsson for Chess24. In today's video, I want to talk about the top match of the German Bundesliga, played in round 5 on December 6 between Baden Baden and Schwäbisch Hall. I understand there's a lot of other chess going on. There is the Russian Individual Championship, there is the London Chess Classic. But to me, the Baden Baden against Schwäbisch Hall match in the German league was by far the most exciting event. One reason might be that I'm a little bit biased because I actually play for that Baden-Baden team and of course I do follow what they're doing. But I also think that it was a very interesting match to follow for anybody. The German league by many is considered to be the strongest league there is and today's match was the nine-time champion, nine times in a row, not nine-time total, champion Baden-Baden. We won the last nine years against their sternest competitor Schwäbisch Hall, a new team which is very strong. Let's have a look at who is playing. At the top we see the players from Schwäbisch Hall. We see Gelfand, Lichau, Lasnitschka, Inar Kiev, Garamjan, Boris Avruch, Kornet and Anthony Virik, eight strong grandmasters. While for Baden-Baden there is Bakro, Shirov, Naidic, Kazimchanov, Vallejo, Nisipianu, Movsesian and Meyer. Now you might say that's not that strong. First of all, I disagree. Those teams are very, very strong. But you could say it could have been even stronger had the scheduling be slightly different. Because it wasn't ideal for our team from Baden-Baden. If we take a look at the lineup, all the players that could have played for Baden-Baden, we see Vichy Anand is not around because he's in London, where he went right after his match against Carlsen. Levan Aronian is not around. I'm not sure where he is. He just had a match in the United States. Peter Swidler is not around because he's in Russia playing the Russian Championship. Michael Adams is not around because he's in London as well. So the top four already could not play. After that, pretty much everybody is on the board except for number 12, Peter Heine Nielsen. And then with number 13, Georg Meyer, it's eight players. So the odd man out happens to be Mr. Jan Gustafsson, which of course is very, very sad for yours truly. Still, of course, I was rooting for the team and let's get into the match against Baden, no, against Schwäbisch Hall, which really was extremely close. It started kind of mm, quietly with two draws on the bottom boards. Anthony Virig against Georg Meyer ended in a perpetual here, as we can see. And Sergei Movsesian drew against Mathieu Cornet. Those are good results for Schwäbisch Hall because the bottom boards were the boards where Baden Baden had their biggest edge and rating around 150 points on board 8 and around 100 on board 7. So that was a pretty decent start for Schwäbisch Hall. And it would get even better because <clears throat> I believe their top player, Boris Gelfand was the next man to win. I'm not quite sure if he was next in line, but I do believe so. We'll get straight to his game. <clears throat> no, that's not his game. This is his game. But Crow lost with the white pieces to Gelfand, which always can happen against Boris Gelfand, but of course was not a great result for us. I believe the opening already went a bit wrong for Bacro. He was a pawn down. He still has certain play against the Black King. He should have played a quiet move like Bishop e2 here, bringing his rook into defense, really, of the first rank. Said he went for broke with g5, but after f takes g, knight takes g5, knight takes g5. The big problem is that the queen has to cut ties with the e1 square. And it did, but here black just activates all his pieces with check and wins. King b3, queen d1. I'm guessing this is a move Bakro might have missed because now he can't go to the third rank after king a3. Queen takes f3, picks up the rook as we can see. So the king had to go on a little trip, king b4, but of course it's not gonna be any happier in the great wide open there and Bakro resigned shortly after here, after queen c2 check. Could have tried king d4, but then just queen takes b2. Let's say king e3, rook e8, activating yet another piece with check. King f4, queen e5, checkmate. So not a good day at the offers for Etienne Bacro, leading to a 2-1 lead for Schwäbisch Hall. 
However, there were good news for Baden-Baden and its fans as well because my friend Mr. Paco Vallejo managed to equalize and I believe here we have a picture of him preparing for the game so we can see he was very dedicated and it did help. Let's go into that game. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Some. Here we are in the game Paco Vallejo against Tigran Garamian and I believe this is the critical position because Vallejo had just played the move Bishop takes a6 planning to win a pawn after Rook takes a6 Rook takes d5 why would have been a pawn up Garamian didn't want that to happen instead he went for this slightly desperado move Bishop takes b3 which basically loses of course white doesn't take the bishop after a takes b Rook takes a6 black would be fine but he just takes the rook and after bishop c8, bishop a2, king c1 not quite sure what Garamian missed rook takes c8, maybe he thought this wasn't too bad but rook d3 just picks up the pawn white stays in exchange up, rook d3, rook c5, f4 precise move defending this pawn, rook f5, g3 and Paco was just an exchange up which he converted with good technique so that led to the 2-2 two -two. Oh, I should mention what black should have done after bishop takes a6. He should have played rook to c5. Planning rook a5 and defending on d5. Here the position would have been very unclear. After bishop d3, rook a3. Stopping a4 and once again intending rook a5. I don't think black would have been worse. So that's 2-2. Two -two. And then... There was more bad news for my guys from Baden-Baden. My teammate Livio Dieter Nisipianu, who has been representing Germany for like half a year now, and it hasn't hasn't done his rating a big favor by switching to the German Federation, it looks like so far, because ever since he's not been doing all that well. And his woos would continue today against Boris Avruch, whom many of you know might know as the author of the great 1d4 and Grunfeld books a strong theoretician but also of course a very strong grandmaster Boris Avruch he won his game against Nisi Piano. I'm not quite sure <clears throat> where it went wrong initially I think this is the main point because here black is a pawn down but he would still kind of be alright after rook b2 targeting this pawn and activating his pieces further, planning some knight c2 moves once in a while. It doesn't look too bad for black. His piano instead on move 40, as it often is, when g takes f, g takes f, and now rook b2. But that happens to be a huge difference, because now after g, f, g, f, the pawn from g6 is gone, and white has this very, very unpleasant move, bishop f3, threatening bishop h5. And here, it turns out it's almost game over already. Black can't really defend. Spiano tried knight c2, which is the best move. Bishop h5 anyway, giving up the rook because he can pick up the black rook on e8 in return. After knight takes a1, this is what happens. This position happens to be winning for white. e6, e7 coming next. Spiano still fought back quite well and he managed to even get rid of all the pawns. But didn't help because the white pieces were so coordinated in the end. They managed to build a checkmating attack. Let's say black goes rook h4 in this position, then rook g5, threatening rook g8 checkmate. There's not that much to do about it. Instead, after knight f6, I believe rook f4 was played, but that runs into a knight fork after rook e8, king g7, knight h5. So Avruch won that game, which I'm not sure this is chronologically accurate, but on our count it means a 3-2 lead for Schwäbisch Hall. One game that went very well for my team from Baden-Baden was the game by Rustam Kazimchanov. Former FIDE world champion from 2004, has been in good shape, especially in the Bundesliga. The last weekend where I played, we, I've seen him defeat Ivan Saric and a bunch of other very strong players. So he's been in very good shape for our team and today this would continue because he really just outplayed Ernesto Inarkiev. Ernesto Inarkiev, another very strong grandmaster, 
I have unpleasant memories connected with because he once knocked me out of the World Cup. He's a very strong player, but Rustam totally outplayed him with the black pieces. And I'm not even sure what to show of this game. It was really just domination. So I'll show you the end where White could not really avoid black queening a pawn. And after c takes b7, a1 queen check, having an extra queen is often a good thing. Bishop a3 check, king h2, queen e5. And the game was over. King g1, rook d1 would lead to checkmate. So that means 3-3 in our timeline. This game ended a bit later, but it was winning all the time for Rustam. So we'll count that as 3-3. And leaves us with the two games that would really decide the match. Those were the games on the boards number two and number three. One between Li Chao and Alexei Shirov, and the other one between Arkady Nidic and Viktor Lasnichka. Let's start. Which one shall we start with? Let's start with the game Nidic against Lasnichka. Nidic has been. He's been up and down. He's been in great shape in the Bundesliga. He's been crushing everybody. I think he has had a tournament in Qatar that didn't go that well. And he just came back from it. And here he's facing Lasnichka with white. Didn't go very well the game up to the position we see on the board. Black is a couple pawns up. And white is trying to make an attack happen with ideas like rook takes b6. But black is very active with his rooks. He's... He comes first, basically. In the game, Lasnichka went for the drastic rook takes e3, which is a strong move, and it's good enough. Our friend the computer says bishop takes c5 would basically have ended the game quite quickly. After d takes c5, there is the very nasty move, queen to h4, and after c takes b, queen to takes g4. Turns out the black army is so active that it would lead to checkmate. Now, of course, this is easier said with computer help than without. And rook takes e3 is very strong as well, just eliminating a defender for the white king. Rook takes e3, rook h2 check, king d3. And Lasnichka keeps playing well. Very cute move, queen to h8. Activating this queen, trying to bring it to h7, and then checkmating white. Nice does what he has to do. He plays a move rook c1, covering the c2 square, queen h7, king to c3. And I believe this is where the match, which looked quite bad for Baden-Baden at some point, started turning a bit in our favor. Black could have won here, not, not just by one move, but he had a couple of options. The clearest may be the move queen to h6, just creating disharmony in the wide ranks. And white doesn't really have a defense. Rook c e1 looks natural, but then bishop takes c5. Once again, not the only move, but the most clear cut basically ends the game. After d takes c5, there is queen to f4, and there is not much black, not much white can do against being checkmated. Queen c4 checkmate is a massive threat. d4 is a massive threat. And if rook to e2, you just take it and go queen f3 check. King d2 doesn't work because of knight c4. And black wins. All of those are sample lines, but basically the black initiative was overwhelming around here. But fortunately, Lasnichka, fortunately, once again, me being not all that impartial because I represent Baden-Baden, as does Nidic. Lasnichka went for knight to c4. And after queen b5, white is very much back in the game. All of a sudden, queen takes b7 is a checkmate threat. Queen e8 is a threat. Lasnichka went, bishop takes c5, the best move. And after queen e8, king c7, d takes c5. It's basically a mess, but at the moment, White more or less has everything covered, and black has no time to go knight takes e3 because white has a perpetual after queen e7, king c6. I'm not sure what's the best way. I believe queen d6, this will do. King b5, queen d7. There's no way black can escape all the checks. So in order to keep playing for a win, which Lasnichka wanted, he had to play the move a6 when Queen f7, king b8, c6, another very nice move, exposing the black king by threatening checkmate here. b takes c was possible, but once again led to a draw after queen e8 check. So Lasnichka went for g5. And now after rook f3, it's a totally unclear position, which 
I believe both sides started handling extremely well from here on. And in the end, it turned out to be dynamically balanced. King a7, c takes b, knight takes e5, another strong move, b8, queen, king takes b8, queen f8. Now we see the black king is kind of exposed as well. So it's not a big surprise that after more or less correct play from both sides, the game would end in a perpetual later on. Here we see the move repetition. And I believe there was a bit of a lucky break for the Baden-Baden team because Nardic was in trouble and then managed to make a very good comeback. But the match would be decided really in this game together with the game of Alexei Shirov against Li Chao. Now, of course, this is putting a bit of a storyline around it. Every game is still worth one point, but those were the two games that had some swings and that lasted very long. In the game, Shira of Li Chao, the Chinese player Li Chao with the white pieces. Li Chao based in Germany nowadays, so it's, of course, very convenient for him to represent Schwäbisch Hall. I believe he even lives there. Shira has been a fixture of the Bundesliga for many, many years. Already played, I believe, in 92 or 91 when I was joining the Hamburg Chess Club. Shirov was already on the boards for Hamburg and he has been playing for Baden-Baden for quite a while too. He's in trouble here against Li Chao. Li Chao had sacrificed a piece, could have given a perpetual here, decided not to, and rightly so actually. After King G6, Li Chao decided to play for a win. Please note, the score was not 3.5, 3.5 at this point, but more like 2-2, two, two, and the match was totally unclear. But Li Chao chose correctly here. He played the move f4, didn't go for a perpetual. This is a very unpleasant move to face. Threatens checkmate after, let's say, a5, f5, king h6, or king h7. Rook h1 is checkmate. And can't be taken because after gf, queen h5 is checkmate. So it poses Black some very serious trouble. And objectively, it turns out Shirov is lost here, or at the very least, in very deep trouble. Rook c2 check, king h3. Same story, f5 is planned and gf doesn't work. Rook c3 pins this bishop. And this is where we caught our, we being Baden Baden, caught our second very lucky break in this match. Li Chao could have played f5 check, king h7. And the very nice move, rook to h1, which would have won for white, if I'm not mistaken. And more importantly, if the machine is not mistaken, because black has no way out of this discovered check threat and king g2. Not a mate you see every day, but this is a huge threat. And no matter how black tries to parry it, he would lose. Queen c2 runs into rook h2, fighting for control of the second rank. And if the queen goes anymore, anywhere. Once again, king g2 is checkmate. While the other move might look no more natural, rook c2, whoops, sorry, uh -huh. rook to c2, stopping king g2, runs into a very, very strong move. Maybe this is the move Li Chao had missed. The move bishop to f2. Giving up the bishop to create a double threat of king g3 or king g2, both would lead to checkmate, and there is nothing black can do. Rook takes f2, king g3, mate. So f5 would have won and would have won the match for Schwäbisch Hall, which would have had serious implications on the overall league situation as well. Instead, Li Chao went queen e4 check, which gives the win away. King h6, queen e8. Planning queen h8, but he's, it's too slow. And here Shirov, who of course is always extremely resourceful, takes over the initiative with rook takes g3, king takes g3 g3, g takes f4 check. And it turns out it's white who's in trouble. King takes f4 doesn't work because of queen takes d4 check. Instead he tried king h2. And a very nice, cool, calm, collected move by Shirov, which maybe was missed by Li Chao, the move g5. Creating a square on g7 for the black king, stopping the threat of queen h5 checkmate. Reinforcing his pawn on f4 and basically winning the game. White is lost here. The black pieces defend everything. He has a material advantage and the white king will end up in serious trouble very shortly. Queen e2, bishop takes d4, queen e6, knight f6. We see the black pieces coordinate beautifully. 
the knight is the best friend of the king, covers everything here. King g2, but this is already desperation, of course. Queen c2, rook e2, queen d3. The black army will get to the white king very shortly. King h1, check. King. Yeah, I believe white resigned here after king h2, queen g1 is the very fast way to deliver checkmate. So this game really had a 180 degree turnaround and this means that in the end Baden-Baden we did get a little bit actually quite lucky one has to admit and won the match with four and a half three and a half here we have an overview over all the results on the chess 24 website this really could have gone very very differently and of course you can say it's the experience of a championship team all these guys have been in many matches while Schwebeschall is a new team. But you can also say it's been plain luck and we could easily have lost this match as well. So I'm happy of course from a Baden-Baden perspective. And if we look at the score, this is the Schach Bundesliga website. We see that Baden-Baden is already three points ahead of the Schwebeschall team, the main competitor. And life looks good. Werder Bremen is still up there as well. This is, is going to be another tough matchup. But today we did dodge a bullet for sure. And made a huge step to, I believe it's the 10th win. The 10th title in the German League in a row. Even without the guys in London, Vichy Anand, Michael Adams and in Russia. Peter Svidler and in Gibraltar, Jan Gustafsson most importantly. Bambam won the match. Thank you for your attention or for this brief excursion to the German League and I'll see you around in the next video. Bye bye.